Today's video was supposed to be about all the one ton goodness that you can see behind me. That's when the K30 Blazer decided that, you know, it didn't really need all of the gears in its transfer case and it was time to get rid of a few of them. I got stranded high and dry on the freeway with a no-go transfer case. I put it in four low, drove it as long as I could, put it on a tow truck, got it back to the shop and tore into that beast. So in today's video, we're doing that. We're tearing apart an NP241. We're gonna be fixing this guy and getting it off the lift so I can get the K30 bourbon here. We can start that conversion. This is gonna take a long time. I'm pretty sure I have lost my transfer case. I have four low and that's about it. I've got reverse. Uh, I have all the gears in my transmission, I just don't have any of them in uh, two-wheel high or four-wheel high. Oh, that makes me nervous. <laughs> for years, the 205 was the gold standard for hardcore rock crawling. Iron case, all gear construction made it a no-brainer. And people shied away from the aluminum case of the 241 and the 208. The 241 has proven itself, in my opinion, and in my experience over the last five or so years of hardcore wheeling. It may be an aluminum case, but it has a six-gear planetary, it has an oil pump pickup disc, and it has never failed me. It is also economical compared to the 205, a lot lighter, comes with much lower gearing, and has a slip yoke eliminator option. Do not be afraid to run the 241 in your rock crawler. I will be rebuilding this one and most likely dropping it behind the 5 speed in my Suburban build. Here we have my 241 that has been all torn down and uh, I just want to go through the various pieces so we can have an understanding of what we're talking about. This has a shortened main shaft. This is a slip yoke eliminator shaft. If this was a regular shaft, it would be about four inches longer and would not have this output flange, but would rather have another input flange like so for the rear drive shaft. By switching to a slip yoke eliminator, you're gonna end up with a rear flange. Let's pull this off so you guys can see it. That will bolt up directly to your rear drive shaft. On, it, on top of that, you've got your four low shifter. You have your planetary gear reduction box. And this is where the input from the transmission engages into the main shaft. So transmission input, front drive shaft, rear drive shaft. As this guy turns, you have a one-to-one -one ratio in two-wheel drive high. So one revolution of the shaft is gonna be one revolution of the drive shaft. This is how things look normally. To go to four wheel high, this slides back and locks the whole construct and will turn and turn this chain driving obviously the front drive shaft. This drive gear right here is free wheeling when the range gear or the four wheel drive selector is not engaged. As we slide this back, we lock it in and it now spins two. Two wheel drive, four wheel drive. These are the shift forks that will live on here that give you your nice shifter feel. Here we can see we have the box in two wheel drive. One rotation of the input goes directly to the rear drive shaft with no transfer of torque through the chain. As the shift fork is moved back, it will engage and we get four wheel drive. One of the most common mechanical devices that you will find in transmissions and transfer cases is a planetary gear set. This is the planetary gear set out of the NP241. These are the planetary gears and inside you've got what's called the sun gear. Now, I'm gonna put this into the case real quick so you guys can see how the mechanical advantage is created through the opposite rotation of the planetary gears, to the sun gear, to the ring gear, and all in between. 
Don't worry, I'm not gonna get too technical. There's tons of videos out there that can explain this better than I can, but just a quick visualization while the case is apart might be kind of cool. So the magic of the reduction assembly, this planetary drive, is harnessed through this range fork. You can see the two different sets of teeth in there rotating at two different speeds. Now, this shaft does not engage with any of these splines. In fact, this bearing surface down here at the bottom interfaces with this bearing surface right here. That's where this guy comes in. This will engage to either the reduction gear or the main drive gear. The rest of this will drop right in. And as you can see, once again, this is how we select two wheel drive and four wheel drive is locking and engaging these two gear sets together. If you can see inside as this is spinning, you will see the planetary gearbox spinning at a reduced ratio to the rest of the drive system. By driving this shift collar in and out, you can lock in the planetary box, bringing you four wheel low. So here on the main shaft, you can see that this is my range selector that moves up and down on these splines to connect this guy to the planetary gear set in there. I think what happened is looking at the edge of these teeth, they're pretty thrashed. I think my shift fork lost all of its little uh, wear sleeves and clips and pads and was just unable to move this thing correctly in and out of four wheel drive. I think that's all it really was. So my diagnosis of this transfer case is bad shift fork pads, which led to movement in this guy that was not conducive to proper shifting. With the shift fork on and the pads in place, there is no play or very minimal play between the shift fork and this range selector. Whereas, that's a problem. Armed with this deep, deep understanding of the physics and mechanical characteristics behind a reduction gearbox, where does that leave us? What, what do we gain from understanding how this works? Well, first and foremost, understanding the fundamentals of how a low range gearbox works help you understand what's going wrong with it when it's not working properly. Secondarily, this opens up a whole world of enhanced traction devices. We're talking doublers, we're talking black boxes, the ORD Magnum. All of these products build off of a reduction box like this. They will add another reduction box in series that will allow you to take the torque reduction or torque multiplication and build on it. Imagine having another one of these boxes on the front of the case that you could engage that would then multiply all the ratios downstream of it. That's what a lot of the enhanced traction devices like the, uh, the Atlas and stuff do. I'm waiting for a Magnum box. I'm gonna be putting a Magnum 205 in this guy behind me. A couple reasons. I really, really wanna get low gears. The lower the gears, the less stress on the drivetrain, the less heat generated, the more control you have. And for the application that I have behind me with the K30 Blazer, having something that performs in those environments and checks all those boxes is key. This is not taking anything away from the 241. I will be using this 241 in the burb behind the Cummins. I'm that confident in it but getting lower ratio gears by putting the Magnum in front of the 205 is a no brainer. It also allows us to add uh, independent control of the shift rails so we can do front control of the front wheels and rear control of the rear wheels, the whole bunch of stuff that we're gonna get into. I'm waiting for that guy to show up, but when it does, have no doubt that I will be doing a deep dive video on exactly what it does. 
consider this a, uh, like a, like a warm-up course with the understanding of how these work, how the range selector ties it to the ring gear or ties it directly to the planetaries, we can understand how we can have a force multiplier in our transfer cases and what that's gonna do for us. It's all good stuff. I'm really excited about this stage of the build. It's coming a little bit sooner than I had hoped. I was hoping to do this after the burb was up and running, but looks like the Blazer had other plans. If you liked what you saw in this video, go ahead and click that subscribe button down below to keep up to date on all the content that I'm dropping on a weekly basis. Or even if you didn't, click it down below so you can come back and hate on me in the comments. Merrick's Garage.